Now, another side to the Iraq war effort keyed to the congressional debate over the Defense Department's budget. Here's the first of a three-part series on how the military decides which equipment to provide U.S. troops. Tonight, the subject is body armor. Our economics correspondent, Paul Salmon, is the reporter. The U.S. Army's 232nd birthday party in the Pentagon's inner courtyard. Happy birthday to you. On display, new recruits for the Army. Go get them. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. We need you. New stuff for the troops. Uh oh. All right. All right. Oh, I missed it. First and foremost, the very latest body armor. I'm confident as a product manager that we are fielding the best body armor that is available to our soldiers. But then, how to explain this? If my son gets shot in the chest while he's wearing one of these things, he was murdered. How you doing? Thank you very much. God bless you. Families across the country, like Javier and Marion La Rosa, have for several years now been trying to buy different body armor for loved ones headed to Iraq. The least that we can do is giving something to give you a better chance of going back alive. Xavier Hermosillo has several family members in the fight. It's bad enough that they're there and being shot at, but to not have the best possible equipment is criminal. The charge in its starkest form, that the way our military buys equipment, the procurement system, has wound up shortchanging our troops in combat, costing lives at the front, both American and Iraqi. The debate has raged very visibly over the body armor issued to U.S. troops. Interceptor, made by six different contractors. Outer vest made of Kevlar and material to repel flak and even pistol rounds. Inserted ceramic plates to resist assault rifle fire. Thank you very much and, uh, and God bless you. Families like the La Rosas in Tennessee have been raising money to privately buy armor called Dragon Skin. Its scale-like design of overlapping ceramic discs, its manufacturer claims, repels bullets better, is more flexible, covers more of the body. But the Army and Marines have banned dragon skin because, says Mark Brown, the general now in charge of procuring body armor, it failed the Army's test. The bottom line is it does not meet Army standards. Some parents, however, are suspicious of the testing and say the troops are getting a raw deal. Then don't tell me that I can't protect my son or my son-in-law or my partner, etc., with the best possible vest because of Army politics. I won't tolerate that. While the Army, despite requests over several months, wouldn't talk to us about how its procurement policies affect the troops, skeptics were eager to. A soldier always gets skimped on. At a book event in Washington recently, Pierre Spray, an engineer who helped design the F-16 fighter, worked under Robert McNamara at the Pentagon and has since become a critic of it, said the reason is obvious. There's a revolving door between the military and industry. Thus, those in the procurement system, when they spend money... Spend it on the high-ticket items that would get them their jobs as vice presidents of Northrop and Grumman and McDonald and Boeing and so on. Because all the contractors were behind it, the congressmen were voting like crazy for it, and all the generals, you know, were seeing their future, their future retirement depended on these programs. Programs like the $110 million Osprey, the $350 million F-22, this $2.5 billion submarine, a new $3.3 billion destroyer, the $13.7 billion CVN-21 aircraft carry. Meanwhile, one complete set of interceptor body armor goes for less than $1,000. To outfit our entire armed forces, active and reserve, $2 billion at most, says former Marine Colonel Jim McGee, who went into the body armor industry, claims that because of the modest amounts... Uh, there's no constituency for body armor in America. Is Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon in the body armor business? Hell no. You know, there's no money in it. Or not enough money to avoid worrying about cost. In order to reduce cost in something that's made of fabrics, you need to reduce the amount of fabric that's in the item. And in the case of body armor, that's Kevlar. Which is where they went to the, you know, shrank at the shoulders to this almost bra strap-like thing they have now. Big scallop in the back of the body armor that makes no sense at all. I mean, it exposes your kidneys, but it took out 200 inches. 
and 200 inches translates to cost. Working within the cost constraints, McGee helped develop the Army's interceptor body armor, but has become a fan of its band rival, Dragon Skin, a technology he says... is two generations ahead of anything I've ever seen. And he's not the only one. Newcomer Dragon Skin has been hyped on cable TV. How do you feel about that, huh, buddy? This guy doesn't have any bullet holes in him. No, sir. Rah, rah clips are up on the internet. Everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. Rounds everywhere. A firefight in Iraq. And in May, NBC News investigative reporter Lisa Myers did several stories questioning the Army's tests. And NBC ran its own independent testing. In that testing, Dragon Skin outperformed the Army's body armor in stopping the most lethal threats. The late four-star Army General Wayne Downing, an NBC News analyst, observed the tests. Well, what we saw today, Lisa, and again, it's a limited number sure. of, of, of trials, Dragon Skin was significantly better. The debate was on with a vengeance. Were our troops being shortchanged or weren't they? The Army promptly questioned NBC's test, released the data to prove Dragon Skin had failed Army testing catastrophically. We tested eight vests, four failed, 13 penetrating shots out of 48. All six of the, body, the current body armor producers of the U.S. Army in their employ passed this live fire test protocol with zero failures. Zero failures is the correct answer. One failure is sudden death and you lose the game. Congress then weighed in with a hearing. Individuals CEO Murray Neal of Pinnacle Armor, Dragonskin's maker, blasted the Army. The information coming out from the Army is fraught full of, of inaccuracies. House members then blasted Pinnacle's CEO. Is it your intent to impugn the integrity of the Army? It astounds me to hear you suggest that our military would uh, rig the system in favor of uh, some uh, favored uh, vendor, contractor, uh, when lives are at stake. The military then took center stage and offered an evidence specialist Greg Miller, shot in Iraq last December. Fortunately, he was wearing interceptor body armor. With your indulgence, I'd like to thank him publicly for his outstanding service to our nation. Republican Trent Franks of Arizona, however, asked the Army to test interceptor against Dragon Skin one-on-one, -on -one, much as NBC had. But let's test this out and get to the bottom of it and uh, do what's right for the soldiers of this, of, of this country. Meanwhile, the debate on blogs, military message boards, and elsewhere railed on about the adequacy of U.S. body armor and the military's testing of it. Engineer Nevin Rupert, for example, was the reigning army expert on dragon skin for one of the military's main test labs. Yet he'd been barred from the army test at which dragon skin was penetrated catastrophically. Why barred? No explanation. He was my supervisor. He determines whether I could go or not. And this is who? Uh, I can't give names. Oh, okay. Being careful, his lawyer there as we spoke, Rupert won't give names. No wonder, since after objecting to his exclusion, Rupert was fired for insubordination and is now suing. Why fired? Well, he supported, and still prefers dragon skin, thinks Army officials were trying to sabotage it to protect interceptor contractors. And who was championing interceptor? A then-colonel named John Norwood. He wrote a request to my directorate chief uh, requesting that I be removed from the flexible body armor program. Meanwhile, Norwood, present at the test that failed Dragonskin, retired last summer, immediately went to work for interceptor contractor Armor Holdings with $350 million in body armor contracts in the years since Norwood's appointment. Norwood declined our request for an interview.